Hey everybody, this is So Many Sequels. We are your favorite movie book club. Um, I'm Josh. I'm Garrett. And I'm David. This week on the show, the Brendan Fraserary fan flick pick, Encino Man. The movie that one letterbox reviewer said set a new standard for stupid. It was the first time seeing Encino Man for the three of us. Did we wheeze the juice as much as our fans do? We also take a royal tumble down a rabbit hole and do our best Macho Man Randy Savage impressions for some reason. That is all this week on So Many Sequels. Find us online in your favorite social media apps at SoManySequels.com and be sure to subscribe to the show. Enjoy! So David and I talk about uh, wrestling sometimes. sometimes. Too sometimes much. We, we sometimes we talk in code. Sometimes we talk in code to each other because we are right. the only two that we understand. But like, because we started this with Macho Man impressions, I uh, remember as a kid, I watched WCW, which World Championship Wrestling, which is not around anymore. No. I went under in two thousand one. So mm-hmm. I, as a kid, grew up watching it. I, Josh, and they what? used to. When I know one of the things that they used to have was. Um, WCW Nitro parties. Mm-hmm. Do you remember this David at all? I no, unfortunately not. Okay, so essentially these it was just video of people like videotape VHS of people's parties, and they were not wrestling themed, like whatever. So a friend mm-hmm. of mine threw a birthday party that was wrestling themed. So we all dressed up as different things. I mean, they rented a limo. They rent. It was crazy, and I wow. dressed up as macho man randy savage did a full-on like beard oh yeah the macho man's coming to get you you know it was uh i gotta say pretty good pretty good we did not make it on television they did we did not make it on television the the demographic was not children it was like young cool party people watching wrestling and that was you know us I think you guys will hear this and uh, categorize it as a very on-brand story. Um, uh, I uh, I enjoyed wrestling as a kid, but I was not the most popular kid. And um, one day we had field day. Do you guys ever have a field day in elementary school or anything like that? Describe like, a field day. So we got to go out to the Josh park and, and we could bring like toys and stuff um, if we wanted to from home. We just got to play in the park for the day, you know, or for a couple oh, hours, no. right? And have lunch at the park and stuff. They just took you to the park? Yeah, they just took you to the park for the day. Play outside. Just that was, I mean, that was mostly, you know, like, you know, there's only so much to do in, in fifth, fourth grade or whatever. So they just like, you could learn. To, I mean, we, we were done learning. We learned. Uh, this was the 90s. What's wrong we with these kids? We had covered it all. So, you know, they gave us, you know, we had a field day. And, uh, you know, we're, so we're, you're allowed to bring toys from home. I don't remember what I brought this particular day, but some kid brought uh, his wrestling action figures and his ring, right? He brought, like, all of them. And all of, uh, a lot of the boys were playing, and they all, they all got to pick their figure, and we were going to, like, all act it out, right? Well, I was very, I was not very popular. So my cool figure was the referee. <laughs> so I was... I was the referee for all of the all of the toy matches. Oh, that's rough. Which I took pride in actually, because it meant I got to always be play. Everybody else had to wait for their for their match, so I was always the referee was needed for every match. But I, I think that means you were the most unconscious. popular. Yeah, I think that makes you the most popular because you were, were needed, you were yeah. there, and everyone relied on you. What they thought was an insult was in fact building me up. I'm still thrown by this idea of a field day. Can you imagine if work did that? No one would like that. I just did. No, I just won't go to yeah. work. <laughs> I'm not going to go to work so you, we can go to the field. Well, and play. it would be like home. a team building exercise thing. You know, like they say, well, hey, we're going to take a group of you guys and we're going to go to uh, do a team building exercise. Did day. you do team building exercises on these, these field days or did you just play wrestling? You know, uh, <laughs> or is no, wrestling a type of team building? I don't know. It would be. It could have been. Uh, they, they do have tag teams, teams. So indeed, it could yeah. be a time. They could, you know, we, if they had wanted to make it a learning exercise, they very well could have. 
But I think you know, it was just one of those things they did towards the end of the year when it was like they don't have that much to do. They did all we did. We had already done all our testing and stuff. So uh, there's a there's a there's a there's a fun little moment in the uh, the movie we're talking about this week that uh, made me uh, think of you two bozos and roll my eyes a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, They're yeah, watching I wrestling. I remember. They're Refresh watching memory. wrestling. We'll get Refresh to it. Memory. We'll get to it very oh, yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, me- you, you, you remember now? No, but we'll oh. talk about it soon. We'll- okay. Well, let's get into it. Uh, yeah. Big, huge month, right? February. Yes, absolutely. But it's not just, it's not just any February. No. Yeah, at so many sequels anyway. It is Brendan Fraserary. Ben, Brendan Fraserary. Y'all, Fraserary. we've been sitting on the, that pun for months. I know. It's a great one. For months. If we had thought about it in March, can you imagine the pain of waiting? Mm-hmm. I know. At least we didn't think of it that early. But <laughs> uh, yeah. Brendan Fraserary could not have been timed better. Um, everybody knows about Brendan right now. He's the talk of the town. He's killing it right there, right now on the awards circuit. Fresh off an Oscar nomination for his role in the Ra- the whale, his first Oscar nomination, um, in his first high profile role in years, really, uh, which is cool to see. We all love him. He's a he's a childhood staple for yes. millennials, I think. Um, and he's like a f- dreamy former action star for um, everyone, mm-hmm. uh, you know. But mm-hmm. we remember him for his for his funny movies, his kid movies, some of them. Um, we've had a full month, full month of Brendan Fraser movies. Oh but yeah, we, you know we've been we we basically say the same thing about him every week. He's yeah. killing it. He's killing it. We can run down um, the list, you know. But yeah, we've 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 we covered past. all the hits. Blast from the past. Um, Bedazzled, George of the Jungle, right? The Mummy, the Mummy, of course. And this is it. This is yeah. this is the end of Fraserary. The time. Brendan Fraserary fan flick finale. I, yeah, Fla- fan flick finale. Oh fan, flan <laughs> fan finale. Wow, that's not, our alliteration is uh, yes. not catching it. Yes, no, we're we, we're workshopping live. Um, yeah, so like I said, we've covered we've covered a lot of big Brendan hits that we have picked, but we wanted to give the audience an opportunity to pick. So we ran some polls on social media, asked some questions in our Discord channel that you can access via our Patreon account. Um, we had a winner. What movie was the winner uh, for the fan flick finale Fraserary edition? Well, so you know, technically, it was the Mummy. The Mummy was by far the fan favorite uh, by our people. Uh, but uh, Andrew selected that as his favorite. So he was right in line with our fans. So based on rank choice voting, uh, it fell to Encino Man. Encino, Encino Man. Man. Now that. Tim Frazier, Polly Shore, Sean Astin, and pretty much it. Yeah, yes. for the most part. Yeah. Um, okay, Encino Man, a, very, yeah. a young key. Kwan. A young, uh, young Kihoi yes. Kwan, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. That's another great. Th- we'll talk about it. Um, we'll talk about it. 1992. We're we're but but mere babies, mm-hmm. basically. We're just toddling around mm-hmm. in 1992. Uh, so have I? Did either of you have you seen this prior to this year? <laughs> I have you no. each other? I've heard um, the title many times. Yeah, it's when you hear about it a lot, but mm-hmm. you're not. You're, you're like, I don't know if I saw that. That's kind of how mm-hmm. I felt. Um, man, this movie is very 1992, <laughs> but, 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 but also a little, it's still got a little bit of eighties in it. There's a lot of eighties still in this movie. Um, so basically premise for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, um, Sean Astin and Polly Shore play two high schoolers on the verge of graduation. Uh, they want to, well, one of them wants to be cool and famous and so he's trying to dig a pool to host the prom party and find yeah it sounds great doesn't it (laughs) he's trying to dig a pool to host the prom party he finds a chunk of ice inside of which is Brendan Fraser who is a uh, uh, Cro-Magnon man Cro-Magnon man 
yeah. frozen in a block of ice that never melted for 65 million years, um, despite it being only like 12 feet deep. <laughs> and in California, where it's very warm. So they thought they they thaw the ice block. Uh, Encino Man, aka Link, uh, is just okay, and they live their life. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the movie, really. So yeah. first reactions. I'm 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 anxious. Actually, I want to hear first reactions from Garrett because you are the one who has seen it twice. Yeah. In the last like couple weeks. Yeah. So uh, I had never seen it. And um, I thought it was fun. You know, again, it is very 90s. It, I went into it as this is the closest that we could get to a modern, like a super bad 1992, <laughs> right? Like, like Polly Shore is basically just like a stoner version of any of Jonah Hill's characters. But you can't do that too much in 1992. So you can only kind of kind of skirt. You give him a name. But you like, can name him Stony. <laughs> you give him a name like <laughs> yeah. Stony. And right. then you give him the Polly Shore character and then you get the point across, right? It's subtle. It's there. You get it. It's fine. Um, <laughs> and then Sean Astin is just the typical kind of like nerd trying to find his way. And then like they stumble upon a caveman and then hijinks ensue. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have, I didn't have any problems with it because this is a movie that you can enjoy for mm-hmm. what it is, which is just an enjoyable, fun, silly, hijink teenage movie. Uh, Outside of that, you know, it, it is very similar to a lot of the things that we talked about. It, it gives us the introduction to Brendan Fraser as we see him in George of the Jungle and as we see him in Blast from the Past and as we see him mm-hmm. in all of those other movies where he is very fish out of water. <clears throat> you know, I think this movie will hit different for the three of us specifically because we didn't see it growing up. And so I think that we won't have that same reaction and uh, connection to it that a lot of our fans will, who Mm -hmm. would have seen it in their Mm -hmm. earlier years. And that's why this one holds so much. And so I can easily see this being one of those, I saw this Brendan Fraser movie as a kid and it's so funny and it sticks with me and this humor is this, and you know, it it being a very connectable one for a lot of people. um, It doesn't necessarily have the same uh, uh, connection to me, obviously seeing it this year. Um, But I think it's funny. I have no problems with being able to watch a movie like this is very, um, you know, in the same vein of silliness of like, honey, I shrunk the kids. Right. It's just that same kind of silliness. uh, Just teenagers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, David? Yeah. You know, Jared, one thing you said is that hijinks ensue never has the phrase hijinks ensue more fit a movie (laughs) than truly Encino man. Uh, (laughs) It is. uh, The fans voted for it. So I respect all opinions about this movie. If you loved it, I think that's totally cool. I found it to be kind of a colossal waste of time. Um, (laughs) I just, I just, I just go on. I really could not invest in any, almost any element of it. Um, Sean Astin is such a strange man as a character because like, he's like a loser, Mm -hmm. but he's like, He's kind of creepy. No one made no, but no one treats him like a loser except for this one dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dom DeLuise's kid is bullying him throughout the movie, <laughs> but everybody else is kind of like just treats him like a normal guy. Mm-hmm. Seemingly, the girl, one of the most like beautiful girls in school, still talks to him. It's not like she's like, mm-hmm. "Uh, get away from me." She's mm-hmm. like, "Hey," she's like cool with him. She yeah. would potentially go out with him if this, uh, you know, if this other dude wasn't constantly uh, haggling him. Yeah, um, he doesn't really resemble a geek in any way. No, especially for the time period. But he's I mean, called one. I, I he also has what have to be like the weirdest parents because they're letting him dig out a pool in their backyard. Like I get saying no, we're not going to pay for a pool. But what deal did they arrive at where they were like, well, I'll tell you what, if you go out there and you dig out the hole, the hole, we will allow you to fill it with water. I know it's interesting, right? The only excuse I could make for that was that his parents don't pay attention to him at all, at all, <laughs> at all. And then they're just I, oblivious to it. I totally believe that um, uh, Polly Shore yeah. had an audience. You but, muted yourself, Garrett. Oh yeah, Garrett, you're muted down there. Well, then go ahead, David. Yeah. I was going to say I totally <laughs> believe that Polly Shore had an audience. Uh, I I don't. Uh, I had to learn about Polly Shore because I also, uh, you know, a lot of the, I, 
Outside of the Goofy movie, I was never a big Polly Shore man. I saw Biodome and it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. And I know a lot of people like that, but um, it didn't hit with me, it. right? And so I never really looked much into Polly Shore. Um, I was really surprised that I, I liked his character. I liked Stoney in this. I thought he was the most level-headed character in this. Which was surprising. <laughs> it was. I, it was very surprising. He was very mellow. He was very like level-headed. And his character was not a character of Polly Shore, which I feel like, you know, he was an MTV uh, DJ. And so he was talking about this, yeah. where they originally wanted him to play uh, Brendan Fraser's character. And he was like, that guy doesn't talk. And my mm -hmm. whole shtick is that I talk. Right. And so he rewrote a lot of that, his part to fit his voice. Right. And so yeah. this is really his first time in there and it hadn't become a shtick of itself fully. Um, yeah, it becomes that in later versions of those movies. But in this, I found him very enjoyable, honestly. And, and that surprised me the most is <laughs> out of anything was like, oh, I can tolerate Polly Shore in this. That's that's great. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised that he was the one saying, hey, man, let's not do this. This seems like a, this or, you know, let's let's take this slow as opposed to like edging it on, you know, um, that said, it, mo a lot of this movie, I. I like there was a moment early on when it happened and I was like, oh, that's nice. But then a lot of the movie became this, which was people doing Polly Shore impressions. Sean Astin, in an effort to get him to go along, says, couldn't you use some more fundage? And he's like, and he's like, you could watch Jeopardy all you want. Like he's like trying to convince him with all the money. And he's like, you had me a Jeopardy. Right. And then I was like, oh, I was like, OK. Um, and then that becomes a part of how Brendan Fraser learns to talk is by talking like Polly Shore. And I was like, oh no, there's just going to be two Polly Shorts. I mean, there's a moment where he's sitting at the table and this is, I have the line pulled up here. I had no idea what he says and neither did the dad. And that was the point, but he's, I know you know, what you're going to say. Cause I wrote the same one down. I already know. Do you want to read it? I can, you, I can read it if you, if you want. Um, you want. I, let me make sure. Let me see if I can find it. For, uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just go ahead and read it. Like, if you're edged because I'm wheezing all your grind, it's just chill. Because if I had a whole baby bunch thing happening in my pad, <laughs> I'd go grind over there. So don't tax my gig so hardcore, bus core cruster. Yeah. You wrote down more of it than I did, but yes. <laughs> okay. Let's I, break I, that down. David, say, that, say it again. Let, yeah. Break it let's down. Break it down. If you're edged because I'm wheezing all your grindage. If just you're chill. upset, if you're upset because I'm eating all your food, calm down. Because if I had a whole Brady Brunch, Brady Bunch thing going happening at my pad, if my family was connected and eating dinner like you all love each other, I'd go grind over there. So don't I'd tax happily, my gig so hardcore, Crusty. I'd happily be over there with my family. So don't beat a man while he's already down. That is the translation of that, which doesn't make sense outside of that. But if you break it down, he is that is an emotional moment. I know. He is um, saying that he doesn't have a home like this and he loves was, it here because you all love and eat together. It's I beautiful. was surprised. You're right, though, that Polly Shore was m actually a much more low energy character than I feared he would be. I kind of thought he'd be all over the place in this movie. But I, again, at the end of the day, I just found myself like. just I just didn't care by the end. And uh, I know that's something Andrew says a lot, but I was just uninvested. I mean, I just at one point I was like, why are they in this bar? <laughs> like why are they what is the what's the goal here like did i miss something do they need to be here for some reason um you know they're driving on two wheels i was like why did they they should have been paying attention why did they sign him up for driver's ed how did he end up in this situation so i don't know i was just i don't know i i, I don't want to say i was bored but i was not i was not wowed yeah, I'm somewhere in between there. Um, I really enjoyed the majority of the movie, but towards the end, the last half hour or so, I became un uninvested, and I was like, "All right, I'm tired of this. This is this is a this is a TV special that lasted too long." Um, but for the majority of the movie, I found it very funny, actually, um, and I was surprised because I also thought Polly would annoy me. It would annoy me, and he really didn't. Uh, I I completely agree that he's much more laid back than I expected. He's really like the most likable person in the movie to me. 
I had to, I made note of, of several things about him. Uh, I, as a, as a fellow Stan of Jeopardy, I love that that's how he knew about the Mousterian bowl. Um, and I love that that's what motivated him to help in the first place. I love when he talked about how, uh, ah, it's too much responsibility for me. Plus I'm already popular. Like he, and he, he knows it. He just doesn't care. And I, I like that. Um, and he's just, he's just a vibe, man. He's just a vibe. He's yeah. just, he just is peaceful. He doesn't want really anything huge out of life. He's just a simple man who loves Jeopardy. And I find that relatable. I don't want to be a part of anything. I'm happy just being me. A quote yes. from Polly Shore as yes. Stoney and Encino Man. It's beautiful. That said, that said, I do feel like part of the reason it doesn't work <laughs> for me is because it is 92. We were children. I feel like Polly Shore as a personality was just like there was an inside joke that we were too late to like we were on like you know like when someone yes. grows organically as a person as like a performer like that if you're there for the whole ride you're really into it i, I feel but like you coming in the middle yeah. or way after the fact it's like what what's going on here i feel like his character largely exists in pop culture in a way that you had to be there right mm -hmm. so i need an elder millennial or a member of gen x to explain it to us please <laughs> Uh, so many sequels pot at gmail.com. Uh, if you could do that for us, yes. I want to understand it because I think I enjoy it in, in small doses. Uh, yes. but it would probably work better if I understood it all the way. Um, uh, one more thing about Polly. Uh, <laughs> and this is another reason why I feel like he's just a cult pop cultural phenomenon. The movie ends. With a, with a classic freeze frame, and then a the end, and then a, a buddy, buddy text on screen. Yeah. And then this is how I saw what happened next. Polly just pops up, and he says, I'll be back, and then he goes away. And to me, that was the equivalent of Porky Pig shoving his head through the two Looney Tunes logo at the end and going, that's all, folks. That's all, folks. Yeah. Yeah, Why? that yeah, <laughs> they think that maybe that day this character would be back, or they will. Uh, they wasn't they're, though. They're, they're planning in scene O two. Well, you know, they made a reference to that earlier when Brendan Fraser did that as his character of the caveman or uh, Link. They had uh, set he, up the he did that yeah. too. Yeah, so that was just a little play. I, I liked the ending of this because it was a perfect ending to a nonsense movie, right? Like, the the goal had been achieved. There was no bigger grand thing. The goal was go to prom, be popular, right? They achieved that goal. And what better way to celebrate that goal than with a flash mob dance <laughs> to whatever kind of 90s early music they were listening to and then have uh, Brendan Fraser and Sean Astin and Polly Shore lead this flash mob of dance. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that is the best way to end this movie. Right. And we really haven't talked about the Brendan Fraser of it all. Um, and there's not much to say, really. I mean, I think he is very good. He's only it, in about an hour of the movie. Yeah. And, and, and you know, he but I mean, what he's he given dances here a is a lot. What he's given here is is kind of rudimentary. There's a lot of there's a lot of, you know, jumping around and acting surprised by things, you know, but, uh, but you know, you just can't get past those soulful eyes that the guy has, you know, he, he has this thousand no, yard stare. That's really he's hard extremely to expressive. Yeah. Well, in his body, he's very like lanky and kind of does weird things. And so it's like weird. It's like fun to watch him dance because his body does things that it does. It shouldn't. It's, mm -hmm. He's just, yeah. He's just so expressive that, he, he doesn't need to speak. He doesn't need to speak. Like one of the biggest laughs it got from me was towards the beginning when uh, they've got it. They're all in the house and his parents come home and Sean Astin goes, my parents. And then he goes, your parents. And the British just goes. Ah! <laughs> yeah. He's just. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. He's very silly. He's very, uh, he's very funny. Uh, again, I can easily see how if you would have seen this as a kid, it would have been hilarious and it carries yeah. over for you. So, yeah, it doesn't have that same connection here. Um, but there were there were parts where I, I, it really did. It just wasn't Brendan Fraser that stood out. 
you know, again, I look at this and there were parts where it was like, okay, if he did this first and then George of the Jungle second, I wouldn't be surprised because it's just kind of a, a logical, like, okay, you didn't speak much. Now in this one, you get to say, George, just lucky, I guess. And then yeah, from there, you'll be next. But like that didn't, that's not exactly how it worked. No, um, no. But this was one of the first, like his first like real starring roles though. Yes, so, yes. This I is a good one really, to do. The other the standout line for me uh, in this was, quote, the only thing you've ever cared about in your life is nugs, chilling, and grinding. I mean, just twist that knife each time. <laughs> is nugs a drug thing? Nugs, I believe, is chicken nuggets. Oh, it's actually okay. chicken nuggets. So he that's says what food twice. I have twice. been under the impression of. Yeah, I believe that's. I believe that is what they're. And I could be something different. I don't know, but I was under the belief that it's chicken nuggets. I assume that Stony um, had a certain kind of nugs. Actually, I will say it could be in reference to women because that wouldn't surprise me for a movie of this age frame and time frame. But it also the I was I made a note that uh, the female cave woman who is thought out at the end of the movie, her name is credited as, quote, Cave Nug. Nug. So it could be a term for women. Yeah. That's probably offensive. I don't know. I can't even imagine what that means. Yeah, I would imagine. (laughs) Yeah. For me, one of the weird, one of the weirder moments is when they're in that bar and there's this group of, for lack of a better word, we'll just say Latino uh, dudes. And they're, they're like talking to Polly Shore. They're like, He's like, where's the worm? And they're like, here's you're the worm. And he goes, no, I'm the weasel, right? And he brings this weasel thing. And I was like, I don't know why that won them over, but it did. That won them over for some reason. That would it, it's I, it's unexplainable. It is. I don't, you know, but yeah. hey. Well, and again, this movie's not about logic. It's about it's no, about it the really, hijinks. This movie is about the hijinks. If you right. get to the point where you're nitpicking this movie, you're missing the point of this movie. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you know, I think we would. I think I w- personally would probably have enjoyed this movie a lot more had we like watched it all together. You know. Oh yeah, probably would have been fun. This is a, a great group movie. I had a moment. Um, for it, for any fans of uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, I had a I had a Pepe Silvio moment, uh, trying to figure out where the hell the term "weezing on the juice" came from. <laughs> that wheezing on the juice. Like, <laughs> I went through a, a, a range of emotions googling this name, right? Because I I couldn't find any real mention of it outside of Encino Man, and but then I found this is just a fun local tie. There is a juicery in Oklahoma City called Weezin the Weez the Juice. <laughs> and and sure enough, they credit Encino Man as inspiration for their business name. And <laughs> but I just it confounds me where Weezin on the Juice came from. I think it's just one of those things. It's like so Polly Shore, his whole uh, this this persona that he kind of crafted on the stand-up circuit just used a lot of heavy surfer isms and yeah. Weezen was a part of that. So it's it was just, grindage yeah. and all that stuff, you know, it's just no yeah. one like that today. You know, no, no. Weezen, I mean, Weezen you could say again, I say that he is, uh, Seth Rogen, Paul, uh, Jonah Hill in that say in that 1992 version. And again, that's the closest thing that you can get. It is but like, what we have uh, today. Nobody, yeah, um, t- you there's know, no one who talks with their own vernacular, I guess is how I would word it. Yeah, it's true. There's um, no one speaks their uh, own language out there. For me, the part of this movie where I went, oh, was there is a so there's a scene where Sean Astin gets uh, stapled to the wall. Yep. And uh, I can't remember the actor's name, but he, he's one of Dom DeLuise's kids. Um, what's his name? Gosh, where's this freaking cast list? Uh. Michael, Michael DeLuise, playing Matt Wilson, right? He has this line that when I was like um, early 20s, maybe 19, I had found these series of YouTube videos called Greatest Insults in Cinema History. And it was like just these uh, super cuts of the best insults, right? And one of them was him sitting there like the this like dead on look of him and him going, I wouldn't piss on your gums if your teeth were on fire, right? And so when he said that in the movie, I was like, oh, this is what that's from. Okay, okay. You know. So there's a all lot. right, all right. I think we got. I think we got to wrap this one up before we uh, 
I don't even know. Go too far into it's, you know, man, than it deserves. Yeah, I don't know. There's much more <laughs> uh, to say. Yeah, th- yeah. Is there any 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 tidbits, favorite parts that anyone was just wishing wishing or itching to talk about? You know, I really liked that they just leaned into the fact that this car drove on two wheels for so long oh, down man. that street. Uh, that was silly. That was funny. Uh, whatever. At this point in time in this movie, I'm just here for the hijinks. I do want to see. I've I've realized what it is, and I'm here for it. And I uh, I I want to see what kind of crazy shticks they they pull and and do. And sometimes it lasts a little too long. They made Brendan dance a lot, <laughs> but I also liked that prom scene. <laughs> it was just a perfect like. Oh my goodness! It felt like a, a SNL blackout scene. <laughs> yeah did. yeah truly um i'll say uh there was a made for television movie uh-huh. encino woman that came out in 1996 i'm seeing here it's on abc and according to this is this is according to an interview mentioned in 2022 in inverse inverse uh web.com uh Polly shore said that disney plus are discussing an encino man sequel and he okay. says Aston and Fraser, he wants they might they they should be back. It's not happening. So we'll see if that happens. Disney Fraser Plus has said he's not that. turning down any he's not taking turn down any paychecks. So Bob Iger is not gonna green light in Ceno Man 2. Maybe Bob Chapik would have done it, but not Iger. Yeah. You imagine these dudes in their forties right. uh, or fifties doing this movie? All right, anyway, no. go ahead. No. Let's do it up to the box office, shall we? Yeah, yeah. How did this how did this movie perform? I, I assume it was a small release anyway. I don't really know much about it. Um it did perform not great. It opened in March of nineteen ninety two, March twenty second to be exact. It opened in the number four spot with a pretty, I mean, pretty admirable nine point eight million. Um in the number one spot for the week, what for that weekend was Lethal Weapon Three, which was <laughs> twenty seven point five. Uh, Alien Three or Alien Cubed, however you uh-huh. wanna, however you wanna look at it. Lethal Weapon, and then uh, Far Away, which I believe is a Tom Cruise movie. Uh, yeah, it's about a uh, Tom Cruise stars as an Irish immigrant. No, wow. not a good, not a good accent on him. By in that one, by the way. Uh, and then the number the number five spot just behind Encino Man was Basic Instinct in its tenth week. Um, Encino Man, so yeah, nine million dollar opening weekend. It would go on to make forty million dollars in the U.S., um, which is a little under what they were hoping. They had high hopes because of how well Wayne's World had performed earlier in the year. That dare they that this movie might ride some of that energy, but uh, yeah, finished with forty point six million, um, which is. Um, for the year, uh, good enough to put it in the number 39 spot, just behind Malcolm X with Denzel Washington, just ahead of Mo Money. And um, the number one movie of 1992. Oh my god, could uh, we guess? The, like, give, uh, give us box a, office. Give us you a, probably you might give us a to. short hint, like, give us a hint because I don't have any idea. But like, okay, 1992, who's in right. it? Because I, this is such a different time that I can't even place it. I don't even know. That's it. I'll give you. I'll give you three who's in it, okay. and they're going to be increasingly more helpful. Okay. Okay. All right. So the first who's in it is Gilbert Godfrey. Aladdin. Aladdin. Ah, you got it. You got it. Her Bazinga. There you go. <laughs> the movie My last there. one was going to be Robin Williams. Uh, ah. Number two was Home Alone Two: Lost in New York, which we've just reviewed. Go check that mm-hmm. out. Batman Returns, which we've also reviewed. <laughs> And a Lethal Weapon 3, and at number five, A Few Good Men. Um, some other good movies came out that year. Sister Act, uh, The Bodyguard, Wayne's World, like I said, Basic Instinct, A League of Their Own. Mm. Probably one of the top top three <clears throat> baseball movies all time, I would say. Great movie. Uh, Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. Uh, I don't know. Some other ones, Patriot Games, White Men Can't Jump, Sin of a Woman came out that year. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, a lot of a lot of good movies. 1992, we were too young to know, but it was a pretty good year for movies. Wow! wow. There you go. Oh, oh I want to call out one more line from this movie that I got. I'm sorry. Some of us pump, and some of us slump. <laughs> that's that's it. That's it. That's the only line. That was it. No Never pump. true word spoken. Yep. The end. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> okay. All right. Some of us pump. Some of us slump. You know. <laughs> So let's move on to Letterboxd game here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, here's a few of the popular reviews for Encino Man, 
on letterbox.com. You can follow all of us there, FYI. Uh, four and a half stars. I'm not a geek. I'm a unique weasel. Mm-hmm. Uh, four stars. Dave is a total dickhead. Yep. Uh, three stars. This film would be a thousand percent better if Link and Stoney left Dave to fend for himself in the woods and rode off into the sunset. That's true. Uh, watch this with my roommate and her girlfriend. I knew it would be stupid, but it set a new standard for stupid. <laughs> uh, and then finally, three stars. Absolutely no acting was done in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, with those in mind, what do we think the Letterbox community would grade in Sino Man? Anyone brave enough to go first? Three. Three point three. Three point three. Point three. three. All right. Do you want to see what I'm? It's our fan choice. It was second to uh, the Mummy. Right. True. Do you want to go, Josh? You want me to? to... I'm gonna go. Okay. I'm gonna go low, and I'm gonna go two point four. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna carve out a niche somewhere between you guys, or a niche, and say two point nine. Okay. We got uh, three point three. From Garrett, a 2.9 from David, and a 2.4 from me. Um, wow. We have a direct hit this week, fellas. Ooh, that's a two-pointer for one of us. We have a direct hit, and I uh, regret to inform you that it is David. Oh, Jesus, Lord of mercy. This movie bad. is a 2.9 on Letterboxd. 100 people call this one of their top four movies. Wow. I'm stone cold stunned. Stone Cold Stunned. How many people put it in their top four? A hundred. Exactly. Wow. And even, oh, and even Century. There even 100. Yep. yep. That's cool. Yep, yep. That's cool. Well, you know, I feel bad winning again. I'm oh, sure. man. I was over there at Charles House the other night. I should have picked up the trophy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't I even think about it. That. Oh, my God. I even so, thought about it before I left that day. I went, oh, I should pick uh, up the trophy while I'm there. Also, I have one of the cards from y'all's uh, uh, me- the meme game. Oh, oh! And I, the night we played that, I accidentally put yeah. one in my back pocket and lot and left with it. <laughs> wow, I thought it felt lighter. Yeah. Um, great, great. Uh, All Matt right, well, is- that brings the score up to I have five. Andrew has two. Josh has one. Gary, yeah, you know we. I feel like we made the these new rules to prevent David from running away with it, and yet we have just made him stronger. I know. I only grow in my the real well, you know, that, that just means we have to improve our game. I'm trying. I'm trying. Mm-hmm. Okay. Letterbox gave it 2.9. What do we give it? Um, two. I'm, I'm going to give it a, a two. Yeah. I'm a three star movie. This, three is, this was fun. It was enjoyable. I would turn, I, I watched it twice within a month and I, and I had no problems with it the second time either. I thought it, I didn't think that it was as good the second time, but I still was fine. Mm. Okay. Uh, that makes it easy for me because I'm going to continue my middle ground approach to this movie and go 2.5. Um, which makes our average a 2.5. So Pretty close. Uh, close to letterbox, but just a little bit lower. And I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. I mean, it's not stellar in most perspectives. So, I mean, if, if no, but it, it's it, fun, but it, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for it Yep, and that makes it cool. And I bet it is a really fun movie to watch in a group. I bet it is. Okay. Well, that puts a cap on Brendan Fraserary. I'm going to miss it a lot, honestly. I'm say it ain't so. um, hopefully, the, ho- great month. Hopefully, we have new Fraser content to do it again down the line. Wouldn't that be mm-hmm. great? Mm-hmm. Do we want to rank the ones that we've done or do we care? We don't have to. I don't know if I can do it on the spot. I got them written down. Hmm. Blast from the Past, Georgia the Jungle, Bedazzled, The Mummy, and Encino Man. Blast from the Past. The Mummy. Bedazzled in Cedo Man, George of the Jungle at the bottom. Oh, sorry. Ooh, wow. That, hurts. that hurt. That hurt. Ow, that, did, that hurt me a little bit. It too. was sick to see. It was sick to hear. Sorry. Um, for me, I will say. Um I will say George of the Jungle. No! <laughs> I will say. I will say the mummy, okay. blast from the past, bedazzled and Sino man. Oh, okay. I am going to say blast from the past, the mummy, Georgia the jungle, 
Encino Man Bedazzled. Wow. All right. They're very, they're all very different. How about what that? five good different lists? I, I yeah. we, we really structured it well. They we're here. radically different, I would say. I wasn't going to put George number one, but then I was like, I was like, that has to yeah, be now. But like, I don't know. Above the mummy? Come on. Oh, the mummy, it was, it was fun, but it has, it doesn't have the rewatchability of a George of the Jungle. Is a thing that you said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that like okay okay yeah we're done like i said that ends the month we'll um be back in march with more movies we're not going nowhere yet so uh stay tuned follow us online and your favorite social media apps you can get links to those at so many sequels.com and of course join our patreon account so many sequels there and you will get access to our discord where you can talk to us about movies and other fun stuff going on uh we will see you all very soon uh bye like and subscribe